What is up, everybody? My name is Seth Dewald, and this video is all about how to dominate your dynasty startup draft from before the draft to during the draft to after the draft. We have you covered with each step. So all that starts right now. So congratulations. You've officially become a sicko. You've joined a dynasty league. It's a, This is amazing. This is probably going to be the best experience of your life. Better than having kids. Better than getting married. Dynasty fantasy football is a way of life. And what you need to do first and foremost is review the settings of your league. Before the draft, you need to review the settings. Is it a super flex? Is it a tight end premium league? Is it What's the roster size? Is it a tiered PPR? Does, is it a start 10, start 9, start 8, start 12, start 13? You need to review the settings because if it's a super flex, obviously you're going to want to target quarterbacks early on. If it's a tight end premium, some people feel differently about this. I value tight ends about the same unless it's an ultra tight end premium, like a two points per tight end premium. That's when I start to put tight ends a little bit higher. What's the roster size? Are you going to be able to stash multiple players? Is there a taxi squad where you can stash year one, year two players? What are the rules on that taxi squad if there's a taxi squad? What are the PPR scoring rules? Is it a straight PPR league or is it tiered? Like it could be tiered for like, Running backs could get half a point. Receivers could get one point. Tight ends could get 1.5 points per reception, or that would be called tight end premium. Or in and how many players do you start? Do you start 10? That's about average. Do you start 12? In that case, I probably want to look to trade back and get multiple bites at the apple. Or is it start eight or fewer? I haven't really seen a league that start fewer than eight, but if it's a start eight, you might be more willing to go in and try to trade up and get a superstar player because let's face it, there's only so many roster spots and so many starting spots that you have. You want to fill those as, as efficiently as you can. Whereas if it's a start 13, you're going to want to acquire as many players as you can fit into those lineups as possible because you need to you need to fill all those starting spots. The next thing I would advise doing is get into everybody's DMs to introduce yourself and make it clear that you are an active owner. You you need to introduce yourself to every league mate, say, "Hey, my name's so and so. I'm excited to be in this league and I want to let you know that if you offer me a trade offer, I will get back to you." And um you, you don't have to necessarily give away anything else other than saying that. Maybe you share your Twitter handle, maybe you start following them on Twitter. Maybe that's another means of communication, but the DM app application within Sleeper is an amazing tool and it's very, very clean. It's very, very nice and it's very easy to use. So I would highly recommend that you reach out to all of your league mates, introduce yourself, tell them what you're about. You're here to play Dynasty. You're here to win. You're here to make trades. You're here to be active. And that lets them know, hey, this guy's taking this seriously. The next thing I would recommend doing is do a mock draft, at least one, or you can watch some mock drafts on YouTube channels. I have some here on my channel. I don't have as many as some other channels do, so you can kind of hop around and see what are these, where are these players going? What are the ADPs like? I would recommend doing at least one mock draft or watching multiple mock drafts just to get a feel for where the players are going that you're targeting in your dynasty leagues. And just to get a feel for like what's right and and don't is this way you're not surprised when a player goes a round ahead or two rounds ahead of where you think that they should go and it also gives you practice like okay if this player goes here what's my backup plan or what am i going to do do i want to trade up trade back etc so getting doing a mock draft watching multiple mock drafts is a really good way to get a sense of where the true ADPs are in your league. The next thing I would do is try to formulate a, your ideal strategy. What do you want your dynasty team to look like? And remember, this is not set in stone as as we were as we're going to cover later in the video. If you're a first-time dynasty player, I would recommend a balanced approach, but formulate your ideal strategy. Do you want to focus around younger players? Do you want to try to win this year? I wouldn't recommend necessarily going all in like some people might. But I would like there are ways to do that efficiently that can set you up for success, not just in the, in the first year, but multiple years down the road. The next thing I would do is subscribe to a ranking service if you want to. This is more of a bonus option. There are free ranking services out there. Keep Trade Cut is one I reference all the time. It's a great example. And they also have a trade calculator. And like I said, it's all free. 
but there are other paid services as well, like Player Profilers, the one I work for. That's the one I would recommend. But I would look around. If you want to pay for a ranking service, if you want to do your own rankings, I would highly recommend doing that. But just having something to go on, a reference point that you can look at and go, okay, they have this player above this player. I respect them. I trust them. That seems to be like a good move. So I would recommend either using Keep Trade Cut, making your own rankings if you have the time, or subscribing to a ranking service if you have the cash to do so. I mean, it depends on how much money you're putting into this thing. It could be like 10 bucks or it could be 100 bucks or more. So it might be worth it to subscribe to a ranking service like Player Profiler. So I would recommend doing that, and I'll link it below. Let's shift to during the draft, right? During the draft, this is what I would recommend doing. The first thing I want you to do is to take your time. Don't be rushed, especially if it's an eight-hour clock. That's pretty typical in a dynasty startup to have like a four-hour clock between picks or an eight-hour clock. And the last time I checked, kickoff wasn't until September. So don't feel rushed. Don't let anybody go, hey, hey, bro, you're on the clock. Like, I need you to pick right now. We need to get this. We need to get two rounds done. Like some arbitrary BS like that. No, no, no. Take your time. Make your pick, explore trade negotiations. This is why we do dynasty. We don't need to be rushed into making picks, okay? Everything's going to be fine. The draft is going to be over. And guess what? When the draft is over, you're going to want to do more dynasty drafts. You're going to wish you were still in the startup. I don't understand this propensity to rush a dynasty startup, so don't let people rush you. The goal is to win, yes, but the ultimate goal is to acquire as much value as you can while also not putting yourself in a desperate situation. So for example, it's obvious, but in a super flex league, don't you can't be without quarterbacks. You need t- at least three starting quarterbacks in a super flex league if it's a 12-team league. If it's a start two tight end league, and that's mandatory, you're, or it's an ultra premium league for tight ends, you're going to want tight ends. So you don't want to be desperate for the positions that the league values. And this comes back to knowing your settings, knowing your rules, knowing your scoring. All of it's important. And like I said, you never want to be negotiating a trade from a point of desperation. Like you never want to be a player that needs a quarterback and is trying to get a quarterback and nobody's giving you a quarterback. So you have to you feel like you have to overpay for a quarterback. You never want to be in that position. So I would go into the startup, not necessarily targeting, like filling out your lineup right away, but I would look to acquire value and the, the players that are valuable our quarterbacks and tight ends in those ultra tight end premium leagues and in those super flex leagues. Now I'm not saying to go quarterback hoarding because that really can weigh your team down, but I would say at least get three of them, right? Or at least put yourself in the position where you're not going to need a quarterback in order to compete in year one. If that's what you're trying to do, go out and get a quarterback. Even if you feel like you're reaching a little bit, if you see that quarterback run happening, Don't be afraid to draft them. Pay attention to what your league mates are doing in the dynasty startup. And don't be afraid to adjust your strategy. If you see a lot of people pushing their chips into win now, this could be a great opportunity for you to pivot and to target youth, right? Or vice versa. If you see a lot of players targeting younger players and those younger players being moved up the draft board, this might be a good opportunity for you to try to win now in a tactful way. So be mindful of what your other league mates are doing because that should influence your strategy because your your main goal in a dynasty startup should be to acquire as much value as you possibly can. And again, it comes back to knowing your settings, knowing your scoring, knowing what positions are going to be valuable in the dynasty startup. It's so, so important. Keep the lines of communication open in your dynasty league. Don't be a dick. Alien alienating yourself in a dynasty league is a horrible way to succeed in a dynasty league. And like I said, you want the lines of communication to be open because if you alienate yourself from the league, you're alienating yourself likely from trading with other people. So that limits your trade partners. Why would you do that to yourself? There's 11 other people in a 12 person league. You want each and every one of them to be an option to trade from because you want to leverage your position against their position against other people's position in the league and you want to give yourself the best opportunity to get the best deal so don't be a dick don't alienate alienate yourself in the league don't say something stupid in the chat be a good person be nice it's not that complicated let the draft come to you don't feel like you need to trade up trade down like 
let the draft come to you. Take your time, make good decisions. Like don't feel like you need to trade up. And I would actually advise not trading up if you can help it. Like don't trade up. That never hardly ever works out trading up unless there's an ultimate value. Like, I don't know, Patrick Mahomes falls to pick nine or something like that. Then maybe you can trade up in a super flex league. I mean, but don't trade up if you can help it and don't trade your future first round rookie pick. If you can help it in the dynasty startup like that rarely works out well. I just can't think of an example where I saw somebody trade away their first round rookie pick and, and I went, oh, man, that was a great idea for them to do that. I, I just can't really remember. But if you do remember, if there's an example out there, let me know about it. So those are the tips that I would that I have during the draft. Now, after the draft, here are some important things to keep in mind. You're going to want to grind the waiver wire because without a doubt, without question, without fail, there are going to be players that aren't drafted that you're going to want on your roster. Stay tapped in with the latest NFL news. Follow a trusted source. Maybe follow multiple sources. Multiple beat writers for multiple teams can give you the inside scoop on which players are winning the battles in training camp. Develop your own rankings if you so desire. If you have no desire to develop your own rankings, I totally get it, but I would do this as an exercise. I, I actually enjoy the rankings process, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I would I would definitely recommend that. And offer fair trades. If you need to use a trade calculator, go ahead. But offer trades that are relatively fair to the league mates. Don't you don't want to be that guy who is always offering terrible trades out there. So that those are just some pieces of advice that I would offer. Is also offer trades that benefit both teams. That's the whole point of a trade. Like you're not gonna trade you know, Jamar Chase for Darnell Mooney. That's a stupid trade. Like I don't, don't be that guy. Don't do that again. It comes back to don't be a dick. So those are some things I would recommend after to the draft. And now you should have everything that you need to know in order to dominate your dynasty startup. So let me know. What did you think in the comments? Give me a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, be good, everybody go out and dominate those dynasty startups. And we will see you later.